How's it going, Radical viewers? And welcome back to Grim Rolls, where I do my best to recreate characters within Baldur's Gate 3 for both my own and your games. Today, we're looking at another companion of the Hall, the tall, tempest, screaming, raging Hulk himself, Wolfgar, son of Bjornagar. Type stand stamp below in the description for your convenience for those that just want the levels and appearance guides. But first, let's jump into some lore. Born in 1339, Dale Reckoning, to the tribe of the Elk of Icewind Dale, Wolfgar was a proud young lad and a flag bearer for his king, Heathstag. Until in a battle against Ten Towns, he was beaten and captured by a red-bearded dwarf with a one-horned helm and a mini-notched axe who would take the boy for five years and a day as an indentured servant. Those years would pass, and the boy became a man, looking upon the dwarf who spared his life less as a master and more so as a father. A father who smithied his seven-foot-tall son a magical warhammer known as Aegis Fang, as well as finding him a fighting tutor in the form of a drow the red-bearded dwarf befriended upon a chance meeting. Wolfgar would go on to quest, slaying the white dragon icing death and soon claiming leadership of the barbarian tribes of the north in order to repel a massive force that threatened all of Icewind Dale. To say more would spoil a fantastic book series I have all but completed at this point and I'm about to reread again, and I honestly highly recommend it for those who enjoy D&D, high fantasy, and adventure. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and dive into the appearance and level guides. Starting off with our custom character, we're going to select body type 4. Wolfgar is 7 feet tall and just a rack of hard muscle. For race, we're going to go with human, as that is what Wolfgar is. This grants us civil militia, which basically means we can use anything that's a stick with a pointed or bladed end. They're our best friends or just something we can use. Regretfully, this quickly becomes redundant along with the light armor proficiency and shields as we're going to be picking Barbarian. We get access to all of that and medium armor at that. But the extra skill proficiency we get for this with human versatility does come in handy down the line. For class, Wolfgar through and through is a Barbarian. Though, for those wanting some more utility or just more options, you can splice in a few levels of fight or battle master here and there with the excuse of just who his fighting tutor was. Though going full barbarian won't hurt or hinder you either. For background, we're going to choose Outlander. Part of the tribe of the elk out in Icewind Dale, it's a frozen northland where if the cold doesn't get you, the yeti might. With this, we get athletics and survival skill proficiencies, which work thematically and are both absurdly useful, even if our survival won't be that great. Ability scores are as thus, odd numbers are never the end of the world, in fact they may come in handy when we start looking at possible feats. Our plus 2 is going to go to strength, and our plus 1 is going to go to constitution, as Wolfgar is two things first and foremost, beef and cake. For our ratio bonus skill proficiency, we're going to actually drop it into Persuasion, as Wolfgar more often than not will actually try to use his words before his fists or his hammer, though he's not shy to swing either in most tense moments. For our other two skills, we're going to pick up Perception, as those beautiful blue eyes see far and wide, and Intimidation, as again, Wolfgar uses words first most days, though I should mention, they're not always nice words. And further moving on to appearance, for voice, I chose voice 7, it's a nice kind of deeper tone as we don't really have a set voice for Wolfgar, unless you count the last Dark Alliance game that came out, where it's deep and he's usually just yelling for Tempest. Wolfgar. Because that's just what he yells. For face, I chose head one. I actually kind of like how the nose blends with everything else. And when combined with the eye color, it actually is hauntingly similar to this very image right here, where there's quite a story behind it, but I won't ruin that. For skin color, I went with neutral tone four. I like this because it has a nice kind of wind scarred look to it. 
It's just slightly pockmarked, but doesn't really detract from anything. Maturity, freckles, vitiligo, heterochromia, we're not going to do any of that. And for eye color, we're going to go with blue 4 as we get that nice, deep, piercing blue that, huh, <laughs> haunting. No tattoos or makeups to speak of, no scarring. And for hairstyle, we actually get a, a number of options. Rover's Tumble here, which we use on Dristo Erden, is a very nice, clean, longer look. Hence the reason we used it for our wonderful Dark Elf. Though if you want a more messier, kind of barbarian, I've been out on a 10 day look, honestly, Willow Tears would probably fit that bill just a little bit better. Or, if you were a fan of the last Dark Alliance game that came out featuring the Companions of the Hall, you could also throw on the Knave Braid to really nail that look down. Wolfgar, being a not-elf, can actually grow facial hair. As to how it's styled, I have four suggestions. Wolfgar has often simply shaved and went babyface into battle. Jaw Cleaner works for that adventuring a 10-day feel. While the Groomed Rascal and the Pointed Retort I also love when comboed with the Knave Braid. And of course, next, we obviously have to choose our name. Unfortunately, Wolfgar, Son of Bjornagard won't fit in this, at least not on the PS5. And I think I did try this on PC and it didn't work there either. So, we're gonna have to just stick with Wolfgar. And as for your Guardian, Wolfgar has gone through a number of partners in his uh, very, very long lifespan. Doubly so. So his options are quite varied. At one point, he even briefly marries another companion of the Hall, which is actually what I base this current Guardian off of. And it's also a hint to the next video. And now, without further ado, on to the level guide. At level 2, we're going to get Danger Sense, giving us advantage on dexterity saving throws against practically anything we can see, as well as Reckless Attack, which will give us advantage on attack rolls until the next turn. But our foes will also have advantage on us. Fair warning. At level 3, we get to pick our subclass, and we're going to pick Berserker, because one thing Wolfgar is, it's big, angry, and more angry to go with his angry. With this subclass, we get Frenzy. And with that, we get Frenzied Strike and Enraged Throw. We can also make an Improvised Weapon Attack as a bonus action. One thing I do feel the need to point out, if we do use Frenzied Strike, we will get a Stacking Frenzied Strain, which will add a penalty to our attack rolls every time, stacking so we miss more often, until the end of our Frenzy. And then we have Enraged Throw, which is basically just a slightly better version of Throw, where, well, we do a crap ton more damage with it when we use this versus regular throw. That said, it's also just fun to throw things. Or people. At level 4, we have an ability score improvement or a feat to choose. For this level, I always go with the ability score improvement, and in this particular build, I'm just jumping it straight into strength. At level 5, we're going to get our extra attack feature, allowing us to attack twice per turn. And along with this, we also get fast movement, which increases our movement speed by 10 feet as long as we're not wearing heavy armor. At 6, we get another rage charge, as well as mindless rage. While we're frenzied, we can't be charmed, frightened, and calm emotions no longer work on us. Essentially ensuring that we are just too angry to be anything but angry. Barbarian level 7, we're going to get Feral Instinct where we get a plus three to our initiative and we can no longer be surprised. And surprise is one nasty condition as we cannot take actions or reactions for that first turn of combat. At Barbarian level eight, we get another ASI or feat to pick. In this case, I actually start looking through the feats and see what might work with this build. And for this build in particular, and just for the simple fact that uh, if it's one thing Wolfgard gets known for is tavern brawling, we're gonna pick up tavern brawler as a feat. With this, when we make an unarmed attack, or use an improvised weapon, or throw something, the strength modifier is added twice to the damage and the attack rolls, essentially making you more deadly and even more accurate. And finally, Barbarian level 9. We get Brutal Critical. When we land a critical hit, we roll an extra damage die as well as a normal additional critical dice. This starts getting pretty crazy when those numbers start clicking in a lot. And at Barbarian level 10, we get Intimidating Presence, which allows us to use our action to essentially instill fear in a single enemy. 
and the fear condition is a nasty one. Anything affected by it has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls, and it can't get closer to the source of its fear. It's actually gotta run away from it, and can't take any additional actions. Barbarian level 11, we're gonna get Relentless Rage. Once per short rest, if we drop to zero while in rage, we'll actually gain a hit point instead of being downed, letting us continue to fight even longer. And finally, level 12, we get our final rage charge and our final feature or ASI. For this again, I start considering feats again. Tough, Savage Attacker, all of those are fantastic choices. Great Weapon Master as well, because there's nothing wrong with doing more damage, though this one kind of becomes redundant for making an attack as a bonus action, other than we won't get that constant negative one penalty to our attack and damage rolls for it. Me in particular, and something I find myself taking with a lot of my characters, I'm actually going to pick up Athlete. I like having that plus one to even out my strength, and I also like being able to stand up without costing a crud ton of movement, and the additional jump distance gets a little frightening from time to time. I won't lie, Barbarians are one of the most fun classes to play in Baldur's Gate 3. From the dialogue options, to throwing enemies around just because you can, it never gets old. And should you decide to stick with Warhammers as Wolfgar does, you'll find many powerful options throughout the first two acts alone that will be your best friends. There's even a Dwarven Throwing Hammer sold by a vendor in Rivington in Act 3 to complete your blonde angry barbarian. I've never been starving for barbarian gear in any of my playthroughs. I swear Karlak was nigh constantly as decked out as my main character each time. Wolfgar lives a surprisingly long life full of both grand adventure and glory, but also loss and turmoil. You can play him in just about any fashion, and honestly you wouldn't be wrong depending on where he was at during his time on Faerun. You might be a twitchy paranoid hulk, or a kind of compassionate giant. The choice is yours. And as for things I would just love to see for this game from Larian Studios, I would like to see levels 13 through 20. I know they have a fantastic reason why level caps at 12, as a DM myself. I, I get it. I know how absolutely absurd the power scaling gets once you get past that point. Players are essentially demigods, so what could challenge them? Well, Terrasse exists. Just saying. Along with this, more subclasses. With a constant stream of patches and hotfixes, I wonder if maybe they are thinking of, if not already, considering adding more subclasses of their own interpretations. I'm curious as to how they'd implement the Samurai and Bladesinger subclasses. Okay, I just want a Blade Singer because then I can make my Sephiroth build in the future. Blame me. And along with this, a bigger party limit. After enjoying a number of mods that do the same on PC, I wonder if one day we'll see a pass that jumps that four companion limit up. I love this not just because bigger groups make the game easier, quote unquote, but for the dialogue and the hectic tactics of figuring out which companion to bring with you all the time or just settling with personal favorites. There's not many places I feel the game really needs improvement, but I find that balancing everyone's side quests and personal quests while trying to remove a tadpole gets a little overwhelming when I can only bring three of them at a time. Needless to say, I enjoy my time doing this and honestly the reception off my first video had me very, very humbled. I've always loved seeing just well you making Dungeons and Dragons and finding out you can make practically anything you can imagine. Darth Vader, Kratos from God of War, Arthas the Lich King, and so much more. And while well, I'm currently focused on doing the Companions of the Hall, as this is the one Baller's Gate in the trilogy they're absent, so far, as well as a few others from R.A. Salvatore's novels eventually. I'll have to just start making stuff up though once I run out of all that. And for that, I'm always open to ideas, opinions, and requests, so feel free to not just like, share, and subscribe, but drop a comment about what you might like to see in the future of Grimrolls. Until then, though, stay radical, viewers, and we'll catch you all in the next video. See you then.